Well, good afternoon, everyone. This is Tom Aiken. We're back again with another great episode of Boom Share. This is our, our 10th episode, actually, and I'm really happy to have Dr. Tony Postian here. Tony is an author, speaker, publisher, and designer. His award-winning work has been featured on a variety of national media, including CNN, Wired, USA Today, CNBC, and NPR. He is passionate about inspiring people and helping them become more imaginative and creative. Tony, great to have you. How are you, sir? Great, Tom. Thank you. Well, why don't you tell us a little bit about what your, you know, tell us a little bit about your story. Well, um, I've always been kind of a renaissance man in terms of my approach to life. You know, I've been involved in a lot of different things. My background is pretty broad. Even my education is weird that way. I cover lots of different areas. Um, my my feelings have always been uh, whatever you can do it, whatever you can do in life, do your best at it. So I was raised that way. I was taught to do that from a young childhood years on. So I tend to put my hand in a lot of cookie jars because I get bored doing one thing very long. So um, I uh, spent time in the United States Air Force flying uh, F-111s. I um, have been uh, VP of marketing at 42500 in Chicago. I have had my own shop doing marketing for uh, the aerospace industry, technology firms, uh, healthcare, etc. And um, about 16 years ago, uh, the One Area Community College asked me to uh, design and build a college campus from scratch, something that's very, very unique that was focused on innovation primarily. Uh, so I built that, um, designed a lot of it. Um, a sizable percentage of it, all the architects and engineers. And um, the campus over the years has uh, changed in a lot of ways. Uh, we start off uh, doing things very, very, very innovatively. In fact, we were one of the, we were the first college campus in the entire Midwest, um, I, that I can say without a doubt, uh, that was fully wireless. Uh, we were the, one, of the, one of the first of two college campuses in the, in the United States as a whole. They used uh, handheld technology. Um, as uh, a way to deliver course content, we had to create all the scripts and all the software for the, um, uh, the pocket PCs interface with the servers wirelessly on the campus because none of that existed yet. We had the first college campus to use ebooks in classes um, in the country because ebooks didn't exist. They, nobody, nobody had ever heard of one. Uh, and publishers weren't about to give us their content because of Napster and all the pirating of music at the time. So we had to write our own content and our own ebooks uh, for the classes. Uh, we were just pushing the envelope a lot. We were, we were doing stuff with biometrics, all kinds of things that were new at the time. Uh, we appeared in all the national media. Um, in 2003, the campus was listed by, by InfoWorld as the uh, 50th most innovative organization in the country, in the top 100. There were only three other schools in the entire list, um, Harvard, MIT, and Penn. Uh, some, a couple of Ivy League schools and MIT. So we were in good company um, as far as schools go. And of course, NASA and Verizon and GE and you know, all, all the usual suspects on that list too. Uh, about, oh, seven, eight years ago, we shifted gears a little bit. We realized that using technology was cool uh, in new and wonderful ways, but we need to do a better job helping students think better. So we, we started to create a new environment that was uh, about innovation and, and very interactive in terms of um, uh, where and how students learn. So we start off by building uh, the Celebrate Innovation Exhibition on campus, which basically uh, every classroom, every room on campus is themed after Great American Innovator. You go in the room, there's the graphics, there's design stuff, there's a little uh, five-minute documentary playing uh, on a video screen outside of each room as you enter it about that individual. We have a 20-year history of the personal computer from the mid-70s when it started. They started Microsoft, et cetera, and Apple. Uh, up into the mid 90s to show the incremental improvements of that technology over a 20 year span. And we have a 150 year history of communications from the telegraph to the internet and exhibit on campus as well. And this uh, this entire exhibition now has been listed by the, um, the state of Iowa Department of Tourism as a destination spot for the state. So they promote it as well. We get a lot of guests in there. Uh, one more thing we added to this uh, was the Celebrate Innovation Week which occurs um, the first week of March every year. Uh, we just finished our CI Week 6. Uh, we bring in speakers from all over the country. Speakers have ranged from Damon John from Shark Tank to Steve Wozniak, co-founder of Apple, to the men of Walk on the Moon, uh, Granny Mahara from Mythbusters, to the cast members from CSI Las Vegas, who a company called Entertainment Research, 
John Gata, who won the Academy Award for the Matrix movie visual effects. Uh, we've had um, LeVar Burton here just most recently, who uh, was reading Rainbow Guy for 23 years, as well as Joy LaForge on Star Trek, um, uh, as well as other things he's done. Um, we had um, an, an MIT engineer uh, this, this past uh, month who uh, designed bionics and had bionic legs, and we've had uh, astrophysicists who study the deep universe and explorers and adventurers and people, an oceanographer who went to the, to the, to the Titanic on a couple of occasions. So just a variety of people in the entire event at a TED conference, but it's designed to inspire. My feeling has always been if a person can afford the six thousand dollar to seven thousand dollar price tag it costs to go to a TED conference or South by Southwest or any of those um, great great events, you probably don't need to be inspired. Uh, the people who need to be inspired can't afford those types of things. So we create CI Week for them. It's free to the public, it's free to our students, our students are required to attend, but it's free to anybody who wants to come. And we stream it online in a high def and uh, it's totally sponsored paid for. I have to raise about $150,000 for this event every year to pull this off. So along with doing all that, uh, I've also written four books. Um, I have I speak frequently at events um, all across the country. And um, uh, in the last few years, uh, we got a publishing company. We currently have uh, 12 books either completed or, 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 or we're finishing on contract as we speak. We've got four more that just came in this past week. Um, so uh, we're staying quite busy with that on the publishing end, and um, I do a lot of work as well on um, design consulting with a lot of firms around the country in the area of product design, product development, marketing design, etc. So I stay busy. Oh, it sounds like it, and, and I can tell you, uh, I I recently had an opportunity to see that amazing campus and uh, in a ten CI week. It was one of the most incredible events I've ever had the pleasure of going to. And so uh, uh, you're not just uh, telling, spilling in the yarn there, Tony. Uh, I, can, I can attest to uh, just how, how, how great the experience you're creating for the students at your community college is. Thanks, Tom. Appreciate that. So tell me about, a little bit about the values, the personal values that you know, kind of drive some of, some of the things that, that you do. It sounds like you're all over the place, but there, there's something driving you beyond just say, wanting to do a job and do it well. Well, you know, I was raised by a father who was very, very old fashioned in terms of uh, some deeply rooted things. You know, a couple of things my dad taught me that have always driven home for me is uh, uh, whatever you do, put your all into it or don't do it at all. Um, so that's what I've, I've done. I, I, whatever I've done in my life, I put my 100% into it or I don't do it all because it's not worth the time. And I want to make sure that whatever we do, the outcome is a quality outcome that has a high, have a high level of, uh, of positive aspects attached to it that people actually can learn from and achieve from. Um, I'm, I'm passionate about helping people succeed. And this is kind of where I've gotten to in life. I know a lot that, that what I talk about seems to be all over the board, but it really isn't because um, helping authors get their books published, helping students succeed on campus, helping the general pop population in the community uh, be inspired, um, helping other companies uh, be successful in what they're doing, offering my expertise there. It's all about helping people succeed. And that's really what drives me, especially young professionals. I'm, I'm really passionate about helping young professionals who are up and coming in their careers uh, take the next step and, and offer that next value-added thing that us older people um, kind of can't do as well anymore because we're losing connection with the younger generations. Uh, you know, the younger generations t tend to connect with at least one generation ahead of them, and you know, more often uh, as well as themselves. So we try to, I try to inspire and, and help as many young professionals as I can because they are the next leaders. They are the ones that are going to drive us into the next next century, and so on and so forth. So I, I have a passion for that and, and, and a high degree of uh, motivation to help people uh, from that perspective. Um, I love design. I believe that everything is a design problem. Everything. I don't care what it is. It's all about solving a, a problem that has to be taken from point A to point B, and you're designing the best solution to get there. So from, I know this stuff seems random. I mean, my educationally, you know, people look at my education and they think that's kind of random because, you know, in graduate school, I've got a master's in design, I've got a, an MBA, and I've got a PhD in psychology, which seems kind of random all over the board, but it really isn't. Because if you put all those together, it, it screams design, um, conceptual thinking, creativity, it's about getting to a, an end, um, a desired end, you know, about the goals you put out there and whatever it takes to go from now to, to, to that point in the future that you actually can say, I've accomplished it. 
I'm all about process. I um, I believe in goals. I believe in I, I believe in vision. I believe in outcomes. But I realize that the true the true change comes during the process of it, and, and not so much at the end. Because if you're truly a process driven person, that's always forward all forward looking, you'll never ever get to the end. The end's always moving, and but, but you achieve a ton along the way. So I'm a very process driven person as well, and. Um, you know, a lot, of the, a lot of these little things that my father taught me as a kid, even things as little as um, you borrow something from somebody, give it back to them in better condition than you, know, than you received it. So if you borrow a tool from your neighbor and it's dirty, make sure that after you use it, you wash it, clean it, and give it back to them. That kind of stuff is always driven home with me. So all about the quality aspect of, of the work you do. Work hard and do your best and make sure that, that you never leave anything behind, so to speak. I, I think there's a real strong connection between uh, what it seems to be a very common theme in these BoomShare interviews is helping people and what you mentioned of the process uh, because process is not just a straight line. There's usually a lot of side loops that come back to continuous improvement. Um, would you agree with that? Oh, absolutely. People don't realize that you know too often people, people spend their entire lives uh, reacting to life, you know, just taking whatever life you know, whatever hand they're dealt that day and dealing with it. Um, but if you take control of things and, and if you're forward thinking and, and actually take a strong proactive look at what's happening around you and where you're heading, people don't understand but a, a very small degree change in your life, you know, half a degree, one degree, two degrees, whatever, a very small change in, in, in angle okay, over, over the long haul, it may start small, but it starts to spread out long as time passes so every little minor change you make in life can have a very long-term big impact on not only yourself but others i'm a huge advocate of the law of reciprocity because you know i really don't worry about what i get in life i really don't worry about me at all because i know that if i help people and i, and I go on my way to make them successful you know what happens to me will happen i mean i'll get whatever i get and you know and it's usually always positive so it makes it real easy to help other people just because if you do that you have a positive life too and a successful life to go with it. And at the end of the day, you can uh, look at the guy in the mirror and, uh, and be satisfied with what you see. Absolutely. So, Tony, uh, what's, what's coming up? Is there anything out there that people can help you with? Is there anything, anything new you're working on that people can help with? Well, I, I'm doing what I'm doing now. Um, uh, right now, I'm raising money for CI Week 7 next year. Uh, I'm in the process of doing that as we speak. I, I'm, uh, I'm not sure if people want to donate money, but I always take it. Um, the, uh, the one thing about me, though, when it comes to uh, sponsorships on events, and this is where I think I've been on both sides of this, um, where people want my money, and I give it to them for sponsorships, and I get money from other people for other events. And that is, you know, and even, a, even if you're one of these people that, that has to do fundraising for any kind of um, event or aspect or whatever the case might be, Make sure you provide a value-added proposition to them. Make sure they understand what value they're getting for their investment. If it, instead of just saying, I need money. Because I, I'm telling you, we go out of our way to give our sponsors a, a clear snapshot of what they exactly got for their investment. I mean, I do a four-page return on investment report. I show them every dime that, you know, that they spent went to something positive and how it went and so on and so forth. I, I've given money to people before in the past as, sponsors, as a sponsor. I had no idea where the money went or what the outcome was. We, we don't do it that way. We, you know, we make sure people are engaged. Um, you know, I'm always looking for people, people to read manuscripts with me, uh, give me some uh, uh, positive feedback or negative feedback if, if, it, if it's bad, uh, to be honest with me, to find out if, if, if a book has potential, if it doesn't have potential, or if it needs help, where it should be worked on and uh, how it should be worked on. Um, some, of the, some, some of the best feedback I've gotten on books that we've done are from the professionals I work with across the country. That I trust their and value their opinion, and that, that's always helpful. Um, and basically, I, I guess one of the question is, what can I do to help you? You know, uh, again, I'm not, I don't have a lot of needs. I'm at the age now where my needs are pretty much taken care of. So I'm more about what I can do for other people. So if if you have something that you're thinking about or working on, and you just want some, some feedback or just some some advice, I'm happy to provide it, and hopefully it will help. And as you go forward. It, and again, I can I can attest to that. You're not just uh, you're not just saying words. Uh, from from my experience, you've helped me in a number of ways uh, in the past year or so that we've known each other. So uh, 
That is true. So if, if someone wants to donate uh, or talk to you for advice or, or read a manuscript, how would they get in touch with you, Tony? Well, the best way is um, there are two ways to get a hold of me. One is easier than the other one because because one has more characters. Um, you know, my website is has my contact information and all the ways to reach me, and that's just uh, adposture.com. As A is an apple, B is a dog, P is in paper, A U S T I A N dot com. Uh, my email is Tony P at adposture.com as well. So. Um, if you uh, were to email me or call me, to, um, all my information, like I said, is on my website, my phone number, everything else. I'm happy to talk with you. All right. There's a there's a part on this uh, Google Hangouts that lets me put up something to be showcased, and I just added adpostian.com to that, Tony. So okay, thank uh, you. hopefully uh, the folks who, who are watching this can see it. And if you're so, interested, if you have a book, or if you're interested in writing a book, or want more information, I will tell you the the, the publishing company that uh, I run is Book Press Publishing. Book Press Publishing is a partnership publisher. If you're interested with interested what that means compared to a traditional publisher, uh, there's a link on the main page at bookpresspublishing.com that um, uh, right right on the main page it explains the differences between a traditional publishing model and a partnership publishing model. They are distinctly different. Uh, but if you read that, I think it makes a lot more sense. And the uh, there 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 are definite pluses with going to the partnership publishing model. I've 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 had three books published through uh, traditional publishers, um, and I would never go back. So. Okay, I added uh, I added that as well to the showcase uh, links, so uh, folks ought to be able to uh, find that and uh, and get in touch with you, Tony. Thanks, Tom. Well, I really appreciate you joining me today. I think uh, you're sharing an, an awesome message, and uh, and I want to say keep up the great work you're doing. I think the, the experience you're creating for your your students there at uh, Des Moines Area Community College in West Des Moines is is simply amazing. Thanks. So, is, is there anything else you would uh, you'd like to leave us with before we close? Uh, no, but uh, again, I'm happy to talk with anyone, and uh, I frequently have coffee and or have phone conversations with people all the time. I, I have no idea who they are or where they're coming from, but by the time the conversation is over, I have a much better feel. In some cases, I can make a difference. In other cases, I can connect them to somebody who can. All right. Well, Tony, once again, uh, appreciate the time you gave us, and... Uh, yeah. Until next time, everyone, at BoomShare 11, uh, take care and, and have a great day. Thank you.